Hey everyone, it's Dr. Mark Moyad, Grand Rounds in Urology section editor for the best section in all of Grand Rounds in Urology, that's the wellness section. And I have been asked by many, including Dr. Crawford, to review a trending article. One of the biggest looks at vitamin D to prevent fractures ever done. This is from the Vital Trial. It published, it went online July 28th in the New England Journal of Medicine. And the Vital Trial, essentially what got all the attention is there was no impact on getting 2000 IU of vitamin D3 versus placebo. There were over 25,000 participants. About half of them were men. And lo and behold, no impact on reducing the risk of any type of fracture, non-vertebral fracture, uh, hip fracture, and they looked at total fracture risk, nada, nothing. And people thought, oh, that must mean that vitamin D doesn't do anything. Well, you come to Grand Rounds in Urology to get an objective look. Now let me tell you the real story behind the story. So first of all, let's talk about the participants. The participants were generally healthy, uh, middle-aged to older individuals. Okay, that's the important point. The follow-up was about 5.3 years, the median follow-up. So let me repeat, you have low risk. These are low risk adults and they're not being chosen for deficiency of vitamin D. They're not being picked because they have osteoporosis. They're generally healthy, low risk adults. That's the key point. So let's look at why the results might've been negative or showed no benefit. There was no harm but there was no benefit. Let's go now to the evolving scale of the vitamin D blood test, 25 hydroxy vitamin D blood test because it constantly evolves. There are a few agreements on it. When you go below 12 or 10 and you get in those single digit numbers, that's a severe vitamin D deficiency. Often associated in the past with something called rickets, osteomalacia, that is severe concern. Everybody agrees that in those numbers, you have a severe vitamin D deficiency. Where they agree a little bit less is in the 12 to 20 range, nanogram per ml, it really runs deficiency to inefficiency. So some people will still do well uh, in terms of bone health coming close to 20, but you become more concerned as you get down close to 12, as I said, and 10 and even below that. What's really changed over the years with clinical trials is that if you look at some of the reports on the labs, Many people consider 30 normal, but in reality, there's a lot of agreement now that 20 to 30, even 20 is adequate for bone health, okay? So keep that in mind. Even 20 may be adequate for bone health, but 20 to 30 seems to be a generally agreed upon number. Now, what's also been noticed in clinical trials is you can only go so high. There have been some trials with similar populations, one done by the University of Calgary, and that was 50 plus, you can see an increased risk of hypercalcemia, hypercalciuria, and there's been some suggestion that there might be an increased risk of stones and possibly falls and maybe even fractures. Okay, with all this in mind, we've now gone over some generally agreed upon, but there's some controversy, some generally agreed upon numbers for the 25-OH vitamin D test. What was the baseline level of the healthy participant in this large randomized study that everybody is saying vitamin D didn't do so well? Their baseline before they were even taking vitamin D or placebo was 30 NG per ml, actually 30.7. And when they took the supplement, the group, they went to over 40, a little bit over 40. So let's look on our scale. If 20 to 30 is adequate for bone health and they're starting at 30, are we really so shocked that there wasn't a reduction in the risk of fractures? But thank goodness this study was done because the thinking a lot of the time was more is better, more is better, even in low risk individuals. But turns out, well, maybe you do reach a point where more isn't better. And when you get too high in a blood level, it could be quite dangerous. There's more to come for that. However, there's a second story that got missed from all of this. And that is in urology, whether you're on androgen deprivation therapy or doing an osteoporosis medication, People are familiar with these in men's health or in prostate cancer for bone loss, for example, Exgeva, Zometa, Reclast. If you look at the prescribing information, most of them say something like this. Hypocalcemia may worsen during treatment. Patients must be adequately supplemented with calcium and vitamin D. Another reason you wanna normalize calcium and vitamin D intake in patients who have prostate cancer or on ADT or on osteoporosis medications is it reduces the risk 
of hypocalcemia. That's why, in fact, many of these drugs are actually used for hypercalcemia of malignancy. So in a way to reduce hypocalcemia, the PI actually adequately suggests normalizing vitamin D and calcium intake. And that's an important part of the story. So yes, for low risk adults, in the New England Journal of Medicine, nothing was seen. It was a great study, but in high-risk adults for deficiency, in those on osteoporosis medications, there seems to be some synergism with getting a normal intake of calcium and vitamin D. I thought it was very interesting in the subgroups. If you look at the very little subgroups in the vital trial of the low-risk individuals, there was a small number of people who are on osteoporosis medications, and there seemed to be a non-significant reduction in the risk of fracture. Hmm. And then there was, a, there was a small group of history of fragility fractures, and there was also a slight non-significant reduction. So again, sending the message that vitamin D is not just for bone health, but in the world of urology and oncology, it may prevent hypocalcemia associated with all of these different drugs, and that's actually mentioned in the prescription information. Finally, from the vital trial, last but not least, they're gonna do more analysis what doesn't get a lot of talk is they're going to analyze baseline free vitamin D levels to see if there's any difference between free and total. They're going to look at genetic differences. This is an amazing trial. We're going to learn a lot. But what we've continued to learn is that the idea is that more is not better. And you probably want to stay in a range. But if you identify someone with severe deficiency, you should do something about that. Anyway, I got to leave now and get my vitamin D, but I'm not going to get a lot. I'm just going to get a little bit. Thanks for your time. Grand Rounds in Urology, Mark Moyet, MD, MPH. Have a great vitamin D day.